We need to start a poll. <laughs> we need a poll. There needs to be a poll going on. What Trade, was it? Good or bad? I'm, you know I what? Like I was that, that fucking band. I, I, that guy always annoys me. I don't know what it is. You, you know what? I was right with you. The same, the same thing. Like I was like, dude, annoys me. Can't stand his I face. Don't... I want to punch his face. But the thing is, after you start listening, I'm like, there's a lot of hits they had that I didn't even realize was they they sung that song. I was like, oh damn. I was like, okay. And they went over a lot of years, you know, right in our wheelhouse. Right in our wheelhouse. <laughs> Uh, all right, all right. And, I'm glad you know, I'm glad so, you had a nice vacation, Tim. I, I, I was I didn't know what was going on with the with the train. I was like, there had to be a girl that was like, come on, let's go see the concert. And he was like, all right, yeah, I'm gonna get laid. I might as well go. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that's where no, I was coming from with that. That's not it. I was I was going to the concert regardless. But to be honest, Who Dolls did let me down. They weren't that good. Shocking. Eh, I, I've seen them before. I've seen them a few times. But uh, I think nah, Mark, they weren't that good. Did, did, is uh, is Marco still with us, or did he get yelled at and and, and take taken away? I don't know. I, maybe she. Uh, so I, I thought got, you wanted to go. She's like, I thought so you I wanted. I pissed to you go. off right off the bat. I pissed you <laughs> off right off the bat, and and then Marcos is in trouble as well. Welcome back, guys. It's been way too long. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Well, I'll tell you right Who now, that concert was that concert was hot as balls. It was ridiculous. Like the heat oh, down wow. here right now is it's a, like over a hundred every day. Uh, yeah, it's uh it's supposed to get really nasty up where I am too over the next couple of days, man. I'm just uh we're hunkering down in the air conditioning, that's about it. And football oh, yeah. season is right around the corner. Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm trying to get in the football mood because right now, uh to be honest with you, basketball kind of pissed me off. Stung a little. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm not. I can't stand that Anthony Davis went to the Lakers. And just well, thank God Kawhi went to the Clippers. Because if he yes. went to the Lakers, I would have snapped. No, nah, that would have been too much for me. Uh, yeah, that it would've just would have been stupid. Let's have overload. three of the top five players on the same team. Yeah, it's that would have been just stupid and overload. I, I I've been one to say the only way to fix the NBA, uh, and I, and I will stick by this, um, is to reduce the number of teams in the league. That is hand. That is the only way to fix the league is, is to uh, instead of expanding, which I think they're trying to do, um, is to eliminate six to eight teams. I don't know which six to eight teams those would be. But you start eliminating them based off of attendance um, yeah. and revenue, and you start having conversations like that. You turn those into de- developmental leagues where you can but draft you know, guys to- and still I'm have to- their I'm rights. Totally and- with you. Totally right? with you I as mean, far as taking down the teams. But the thing is, it's almost like you know you can't do it now. It's like, hey, by the way, I know you've been rooting for your team your whole life, but they're too shitty to stay in the league. Well, no. What they would have to what they would have to do is they would have to plan for it, and they would have to say, okay, this is you know we're, we're going to have because you you can't have those teams in the draft, right? So you have to you have to have a season or two where you're planning for it to eliminate those seasons. And what you do is so you would, is you you, you, you have you those up, players be you have two drafts that year. So are you familiar with the Premier League soccer? Um, um, I am. No, God, no, God, well, no. The, well, the one of the things they do, and I'm not. I'm not even going to act like I'm an expert at all, but I'm almost positive they go by the seasons every year. Like the last four teams in the league almost get kicked out of the division. No, see, I don't want to. I don't want to do anything like that because you could have. You could have a like. I don't want the Knicks out of the league, right? Like I don't. I don't. I think that would be bad for basketball. I think the idea of well, of, what's of bad for basketball right now is no one wants to go. No one wants to go to the Knicks. That's bad. No, for but, 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 but yeah, but but here's but here's the thing. Right, and and this is what and this is what contraction would do is it would a, a lot of the better players in the league would have to be made up like it's what you're doing is there have to be something with the salary cap since you're contracting you'd have to expand. You have to have, have a, better players you have on to the team. Seriously, have a hard 
hard hard cap period. Right. There's but no, but, there, but no there are things you can do because if the product's it. better. But there are things you can do because if the product's better, you're going to make revenue, right? So the the, the money will be the money's there now. So if the product's yeah. better and there's more intrigue, there, there's more money to be made. So it, it th- that's a wash. What you need to find a way to do is in, and think of the excitement this would conjure up, right? Where it's not free agency. Those players are still under contract, and their contracts now become draftable. And you put all of those players in a roundtable fantasy draft, and then you have, based off of who was terrible the, the last year, you have a draft from worst team in the league who are now going to be in it to the first to the best team in the league. And all the available players that were made available by the, by the teams that are getting contracted are now in a pool of players, and you have to draft yeah. them. But you'll be drafting them, drafting their contract as well. So it's not as easy as I can just draft the best player or I can draft. Yeah. You've got to fit their contact yeah. into your structure. So what that does is the better teams, right, now they, they maybe if one of those guys drop or if there's a situation or a trade or something was to happen, maybe they can't draft one of those good players because they can't fit them under the contract or under the cap. But there's a creative way to do it to make the league better. But right now the NBA has a huge fucking problem on its head. Huge problem. It, it, you know, I, I just can't. Maybe it's, you know, our generation, but, you know, I think we're on the same wavelength. When did everybody want to start, like, getting together? And can you imagine, super team? Can, you imagine, can you imagine Larry Bird being like, you know what, man? I'm going to go play with Magic. Yeah. Like, I mean, can you imagine Jordan? Can you imagine Jordan being like, man, I can't do this anymore. I'm going to play with the Pistons. Oh, my I mean, that, that's the thing that... The, the people don't realize that's what's hurt in NBA is because it's not allowing for rivalries. And when, let, let's say Kawhi actually went to the Lakers, who, who the hell even wants to watch the NBA season? That's almost a done deal. You'd almost have to hope for an injury. I mean, yeah. I, I, I like sort of what happened this year with Durant. Yeah. Because if Durant doesn't get hurt, I mean, I was thrilled. Oh, I was please, thrilled please. that the Raptors won it, but I wasn't thrilled about how it happened because you would like to see them beat them healthy. But I don't know that they could have. No, they wouldn't have beat them healthy. Let's, let's be honest. Yeah. Uh, the games, you know, the, the I, games I, are too games are too close without Durant. Well, I'll, you know what? So, I'm going to give credit. I'm going to give credit where credit's due. Kawhi Leonard is a way better player than I ever thought he was. Oh, he's uh, he's amazing. He's absolutely amazing. And I got one one of the interesting things going into next year is going to be to see uh, like th- these guys coming off of these injuries, the ACL injuries. Sometimes these guys are, I mean, they're still good, but they're not ever the yeah, same. It's, not- it's going to be interesting to see what Durant does. And and it's gonna, I'll tell you the real what's going to be funny is seeing Kyrie, who couldn't take it in Boston. Oh, in Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Well, you know what? Kyrie sucks. I don't care. You know, you know. I tell you, he's a he's a great player, but he does not play well with others. He needs oh, man. He, in Cleveland. He had to step down to LeBron. But if he has the ball, he has to have the ball in his hands. They lose. He does not meet the other teams as people or the other people on his team, bro. Better. And that's the problem. I, uh, I watched him. I've watched him for the last two years, and I will say that some of the most exciting basketball that I've seen as a Celtic fan. In my life, was the period of time last year where him and Haywood weren't on the court, or two years ago, and they made that run to the Eastern Conference Finals. Well, Terry Rozier on the seven his, games. Played his ass off. With Terry, with Jason Tatum and, and Jalen Brown yep. and all the kids, and they all played their asses off. I mean, that was. And I'm, that I'm, was I'm a fun. big Marcus Smart. I like Marcus Smart. I, I'm surprised. Well, so do I. I, I like I like Marcus Smart as well, but I, but that that team was more of like that team was Tatum and Brown and those guys. So yeah, as, absolutely. You know, I'm excited. I mean, one thing I'm excited about as a Celtic fan right now is that I have no expectations of a championship right now with the teams that are out there and the development of Jason and uh, Jalen to hopefully take it to the next level. That, and I also think Kemba is much better than Kyrie. And I said it. I think Kemba, I think Kemba is a way better fit for what you guys do. Yeah. So, so do ten I. times better. So do I. So do I. Because, wow. yeah. Did you see? I'm gonna tell you right now. Watch, watch Philly, Philly's gonna be right there. Well, that whole for signing as, was huge. 
that Horford side. Well, that true. and if MB State is healthy, then you know they actually have a year to play together. Where Tobias and you know when Jimmy Butler was there, I can't believe that dude went to Miami, but whatever. Yeah, but how about, Tobias, how about, uh, how about Westbrook? With all these guys? Westbrook and Harden. Oh, first of all, who's, who's who's dominating the ball on that on that team? There's a nice that, that's gonna be a fight in the locker room. There, no, I, I don't think so. I think they're gonna be fun to watch together. I don't think I don't think they'll be good enough to win, but I think, man, I think they're gonna be really fun to watch together. I'm gonna tell you right now, the other three guys on the on the offensive side, ladies will just sit on the Oh, don't even attempt to shoot the ball. Yeah, you know, don't I even attempt even... just rebound, screen, get out of their way, <laughs> let them do whatever they want. If you, if you can out. play it like that, you win. You you're gonna you'll be fine. <laughs> Clear, clear it out, guys. Clear it out. And it, is D'Antoni not? Is D'Antoni is still the coach of Houston, right? They haven't done anything crazy. Yeah. Right? Is that D'Antoni out there? No, yeah. He's oh, still Mark, there. can you imagine him right now drawing up fucking plays? No defense, none. They may score like no. 160 and still lose like uh, multiple games, like one, 173, 168 <laughs> final. <laughs> I, I don't know how, how does James Harden, how does James Harden and Russell Westbrook fight with a triple double now. I'm telling you, dude, you that's going to be fun. You killed both their stats. I, you know what? I'm a big West Westbrook fan. I think he gets shit on way too much. I think, you know, well, he, yeah, I mean, he's he trying to do, do some, so some much out there, man. He's trying to do everything, especially when Durant left. He's trying to do everything. He hustles he hustled, he hustled his ass off day in, day out. You know, I can't play defense. I, you know, that's one thing James Harden doesn't do is play any defense. So how about the Giants, Tim? Uh, I'm getting ready, man. Honestly, I'm 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 getting excited because I think I just have a feeling, and this, I have no basis on this at all. I think this defense is gonna be really. I think this defense is gonna be good this year. I think with Betcher having a, a whole year and bringing in more of his people, I think this defense is going to start forming in to what he wants it to be. I hope so. I hope that uh, I'm excited and, to see a lot of these young pieces on the defense and, and how some of the second year guys are going to get better and somehow the first year guys are going to how the first year guys are going to develop and slide in and fit as well. Um, well, that's what I the think. Defense the secondary is, I'm excited about. That secondary, I, I'm really curious to see who's going to be the leader of that young secondary. Well, I'm well, I'm also I'm I'm also curious to see who the league exposes, because you know, despite all yeah. of our you know high hopes and expectations, there's going to be a couple of guys that the league is going to expose as you know either guys that are going to take a little longer to develop or guys that aren't going to be able to cut it at the NFL level. And uh, all of that should start being revealed uh, a week from tomorrow uh, when the Giants take the field on the 25th. Yeah. A week. A week. Can you believe it's it's, it's trading camp already? Yes. uh, I'm, I'm excited. I'm ready for it. It's time. I need it. Oh, uh, t- t- who you tell him, man? I, I'm not a baseball guy at all. And this time of year blows. Well, I I am. A, I, I enjoy I enjoy the national pastime. Um, I can't say anything bad about baseball. I, I enjoy baseball. How can you not be romantic about baseball, right? Um, <laughs> but but um, but this time of year, man, when you know, I, I was just reading the guys start reporting on Monday. I mean, it just gets you. Fired up! You're seeing the fantasy draft stuff come out, seeing the tiers, the you know different players, different rankings, different opinions from uh, all the quote unquote experts, and uh, just gets you fired up, man. And uh, falls around the corner, and uh, we're gonna be seeing those blue jerseys flying around the field uh, in no time. And uh, hopefully, one of those blue jerseys that we get to see flying around the field this season is Daniel Jones. Honestly, you know, at this point. Yeah, I'm over the whole draft deal and all that stuff. I just I oh, want I'm to see not. him play. Well, I'm not over. It. I know I want to I want to see him play. You know, nothing I'm I can do not about the past right now. Pick. 
but I still want to see I still want to see Jones play because if you took him at six, you, you got to play the kid. You need to know what you have at least in a handful of games at some point this year. The problem I think they have is is when do they pull the plug from Eli? And I've said this before. I don't know that you can see it happening before November. I, I don't see it happening before that. I, unless we're and, their and, Giants are unless, completely blown unless out. Unless they completely unless they completely bottom out, right? Unless they're yeah. like two and eight. If they're three and seven, two and eight, then I can see them making a switch. If they're somewhere treading water, you know, four and, and, and five, Eli is gonna play another three or four games and you're looking at maybe Jones getting a month at that point. But I, I think they're gonna have to be eliminated from the playoffs really before the Giants it, make it, a move. That, it just matters what the division does. Is the division gonna be usual NFC East and beat up on each other to where we still have a chance at the end of the season because they beat up on each other? Or well, are we getting blown out the season? Here's the thing that you have to hope is that if I mean the players are gonna know. Right, like the, they're yeah. going to see in practice. They're going to they're hopefully, hopefully, Jones is going to be your second quarterback. So he's going to get some reps. You're going to see him. He's not going to be a, a figment of your imagination. Those guys are going to know if Jones is better than Eli Manning. And you you get a problem on your hands if you don't do the right thing by the team, right? Like Eli yeah. should have a short leash. But we know the history here. So would you be surprised if it's November and Eli's Manning's playing? No. But you're going to yeah. have a mutiny on your hands if Daniel Jones is the better quarterback and the team knows that, and you're still throwing Eli Manning out there in games that if you were to win, well, what, we're talking about games in October, November, right? You've got a chance to go to the playoffs. Yeah, once, once the games become meaningless, there's no reason they can justify Eli being out there. No, there's none. But but Result. it gets to a point though where his play can dictate where even if the games are worth something, it, it makes no sense having him out there. Like if he's not play, if he's playing the same way he has over the last three years, you're just wasting games and you're wasting time. You took a kid sixth overall. You need to see that kid play so that you can evaluate him. And if the guy in there right now is isn't doing the job and the offense is inept. What are you waiting for? Why are you wasting games to get to the point where the games don't mean anything to see the kid? Let's see the kid in the situation where he has a chance to rally the troops, win some games, and make a run. Right? I mean, essentially, if in the perfect scenario as far as Daniel Jones coming in, granted, I don't want this to happen. If we bought him out or whatever, whenever he comes in, let's say he's got a month to play. What you would like to see is Daniel Jones – Progressing to where you're getting excited for next year. Yeah, so you're like, okay, you're like, I can see, I can see where this is going. He's he's, he's good, and you're gonna give him another year. Oh, I'm excited for next season. Sort of you like know, the Jet I, fans this year, but here here's the problem with that though, is the, the the Jet fans got to see Donald from day one. But like, my and you the got, thing you with got that is, see, is the big difference between. Oh, uh, what's his face, uh, McCown, to, you know, Eli. Eli's a left no, 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 guy. No, no. Is, they're going to the, give him a They're going to give him a, sw- they're there, give him a swan like song. If it, but if the team isn't, but the, 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 like enough of the swan songs. Like the team has no, been I, a swan song for the last three years. Like the, there's been, we've had just swan song seasons for the last two years. The, the offense has been inept for the last three. I mean, at what point? Does winning become the most important thing again? It, it was just, you know, it, it's, I just, I know I noticed it last year. I, his arm's going. His arm's going. You know, it's just age. It, you know, no fault of his own. His arm's no. going. You know, it, no. And this is, and it's just life. It, it, same thing happens. Two separate pain. conversations Eli's career it, and Eli's current play, right? I mean, and, yeah. And the same thing happened with Peyton Manning. If whoever wants to not admit it, Brock Osweiler was the only reason, you know, they were got up to where they were. He, Peyton didn't win that Super Bowl. <laughs> you know, Brock did. You know, Brock got them to the Super Bowl. Or it wouldn't have happened. That's why he got the money he did. 
You see, I got news for you. I think it's I think it's less his arm and more his legs and his head. I I, well, I think it, I, I, I don't I read, think I it's his arm. Today. I was reading something today on Eli, the same thing. The same thing you're saying is because he's had such a shitty line for the past three years, he's picked up some bad habits. And I definitely no, see, see I don't I don't even believe that because I always think he had the bad habits. I always think he had the bad habits, but you you can see that he's watching. He's he's just. I I never thought he was skittish. Remember when they referred to him as skittish in two thousand seven? I, I didn't think he was skittish. No, I, I never think, thought, I thought that. he was. I thought he not was that, a young kid years. that was learn. I thought he was a young kid that was learning the game, and sometimes it takes kids three, four, five years to do that before the the game slows down and they're able to take off. That's why. That's why it's important that the kid plays right away so you can see that progression. Um, but he looks skittish now. Like, now he looks skittish. I, I, and he I, looks I, I like totally his legs. His legs, he was never a scamperer, but his legs were good enough and his awareness was good enough to be able to get him out of situations, to be able to throw the ball or get down or do whatever he needed to do. He can't do that anymore. And, it's, and I think that he may, and when you know that, and you're in the pocket, and you know that your legs can't do that anymore, then your head gets to you. And I think that's, yeah, I think that's what's going on with Eli right now. I think it may be like more of a self-confidence problem more than anything else. And you could throw flashes right. of good plays out there, but for the flashes of good plays, I'll give you a shit ton of bad plays over the last three seasons. Well, the thing is, Eli, Eli used to never – Eli's never taken the big, the head, big hit. He knows – he knows what to do. He, he'll duck, and that's fine. But it used to be back back in the day, 2007, and be, a little beyond that, was he would take the hit. He, he would take the hit and you know throw it out there. Granted, sometimes it was he shouldn't have thrown it, but he would throw it. But now, now he just he's he's scared of a turnover, and he he just he falls on the ground. And it's ridiculous, you know. But and, you know that's what happens. You get old. He's like, I don't want to get hurt anymore. I totally understand. And my thing is, uh, I would I would like to see Jones play because I, I much like what happened with Darnold, right, man. I mean, but by the end of the year last year, if you watch his, if you watch December of, of Sam Darnold, there's no reason why a Jet fan should not be ecstatic right now right oh, like, and, and that's what and that's what i Darnold, want going into next year not only darnold but with josh Allen. you know you, and, you saw what he was doing at the end of the year yeah 100 like, percent. you should be 100 you should be like, excited yes so i think buffalo buffalo right now you're ecstatic right uh yeah you got, uh, you got your right now baltimore right now fired up right uh, I want to be that fired up going into next season. And here's the thing. Seeing him for four or five games doesn't get me as fired up because I've seen this gig before. And I've seen that sometimes what happens is after four or five games, the defense catches up to you a little bit. And and, and they'll make adjustments that will confuse a young player. So then that all, that young player has to come back. And he has to make adjustments. And then sooner or later, after making adjustment after adjustment, all these adjustments, you get used to them, and the game slows down, and it becomes like the matrix out there for certain guys. And, and you gotta yeah. get to the, you got to get to that point, and the only way to get to that point is to play. So if you were to see Daniel Jones late, even if he's promising, does that necessarily carry over into a full season – in 2020, I don't know that it does. I feel a lot more comfortable if I see him for 16 games this year to know and be more comfortable or excited or nervous about going into 2020. Well, I, you know, obviously, it would be more of a sample size. All I want to see is progression. I want to see you getting better. But how if much progression can you see over a month? Well, I understand that. And then it's really right, and I mean, that's, that, a, that's my concern is how much, but how much progression could if, if the kid plays five games, how much really can we see him progress? Right, like I, I, I don't know. Well, that let's, we, let's, I don't let's know say that this: that's, he's got a month left. He's got a month left. Whatever the schedule is, I don't even care. It, let, let's say he goes 
three and one in that in that timetable. Are you excited for next season? Let, let's say he played all right. He didn't blow. He didn't. His stats weren't Tim, ridiculous. Tim, they can go. Tim, they can go zero and four. Okay, and and I yeah. wouldn't care. But to me, it's 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 about how he looks, right? If they go three and one, and he was seventeen for thirty six, but he didn't turn the ball over, and he threw for a buck thirty eight, and 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 was able to scamper for around forty yards and a touchdown. I, no, that's not impressive to me. Like that's you didn't necessarily have a great game there. I don't. I'm not thrilled about that. But if you lose if you lose a game, thirty one twenty three. And, and you went, you know, 24 for 37, and you, you had, you know, 288 yards with with two touchdowns and two picks, and and you you, you made you had a drive at the end that that fell short, and you were in the shit, and you were going back and forth, and it was a tight nip and tuck back game. I, I feel like that's more of a okay, we lost that game, but that's more of like you lost the battle to win the war with a young quarterback, right? Like. That, oh, yeah. he, he takes away so much from that game. There's so much positive on film for him to see in that game, for him to move forward with. So uh, I think it depends on how Daniel Jones plays. And, and, well, you and know what? You, you brought, up, you brought up a play. great point. You, you made me think of a great point because uh, the old Eli, you should never be scared of turnovers. He was a risk taker. And that's why I want to see – what Daniel Jones, when he plays, is he gonna be scared of the turnover, or is he be like, "Hey, I, I can get, I can get that ball in there, or you know, take the risk." Well, that's and that and to me, there you go, right? Like, and and there's different picks, right? Like, if you're telling me, like, if, if it's his rookie year, first of all, I'm not expecting to win a Super Bowl, and I'm not expecting, uh, like, I want to see the kid have balls. Like, if the kid makes the right read and the cornerback makes a nice play on, on, on a decently thrown ball and picks the ball off, I can live with that. If the kid mm-hmm. goes into double coverage numerous times and doesn't – if he gets tricked once, if he gets tricked twice, a young quarterback, you're going to live with certain things, right? But does the kid have the mm-hmm. balls to keep stepping up and making the throws? And, and if it's the right read of, most of the time, you live with the pick. Right, you live with the maybe the underthrown ball if it's the right read because you can go back to the chalkboard and you can say, okay, maybe the ball came out late, maybe something else happened, maybe there's a delivery issue, right? But that's it, 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 is he making the right reads in real time? Is he throwing into the open windows? Is he anticipating? Right, the 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 the, the, pl- the, the result of the play for a young quarterback is is great if it ends up phenomenal, but. It's more of the mental reps in real time because you, you're, you're not looking at the 16 games. You're looking at 160 games over the next decade with this kid. Well, I, I, got, I got a question for you. So what it, it seems like to me is they're trying to set up Daniel Jones exactly how they set up Eli a long time ago. But they're trying to be a little well more okay. – uh, Ten. No, no, this is no. Listen, hear me out. This, this is the reason they traded Odell. What, what, what did uh, Giants got rid of Shockey? Why Shockey and Tiki were in Eli's ear in the huddle, and just like like nonstop, it was said Eli be able to take over the huddle himself. Yeah. Where you know Daniel Jones, they're they're like oh, they already know Odell would do that, so they're we're gonna get rid of Odell now. Before he can even do anything like that to Daniel Jones, and Daniel Jones has to focus on him. Well, I mean, they didn't get rid of Shockey until he got fucking hurt. I mean, he he was on the team. They, I mean, they let him basically show up, Eli, for for a couple of seasons. But uh, I mean, I don't I don't know. Oh, fucking Shockey, you just made me <laughs> think of, I hate son of a bitch that guy. I, I like Shockey, but he's you know. He, 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 you know, his his career ended where it should have been. He could have been a way better player. He liked the party I too mean, much. Shocky. Yeah, he had <laughs> he had the potential to be an all time great, and he just he just I don't know. 
wasn't very smart. Wasn't the sharpest knife in the uh, in the drawer there. Yeah, hey, suppo- supposedly like the, no- the nose candy too much. Oh really? Yeah, that, that's the rumors I've heard. Uh oh. But yeah, I don't care. <laughs> you know, obviously we we didn't have a problem with that in this team too much. And I, I don't. I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. With with, with Daniel, jo- I, I don't. I don't see how it could be a whole Kurt Warner thing, because if I don't know how, I think a section of our fan base would just implode. Like I, I don't know that Mara would do that. Let's remember that when when they went to Eli Manning from Kurt Warner, that team was five and four. So let me let me throw this at you, right? I'll, yeah. give you, I'll give you the scenario right out of Eli's rookie season, right? Okay. Eli goes five. Eli Eli opens up and goes five and two, right? The Giants have a couple first of first of all, he goes five and two. I'll tell you right now, he's finishing up the season. Well, hold on, wait a minute. Oh, all right, so then so then that's it. You just answered my question because it it, yeah. it doesn't matter it doesn't matter what happens from out out from five and two. And, and until they were completely out of the playoffs, okay. Uh, be playing. Okay, all right. But, so then that answers my question because if it so it's not really like the Kurt Warner situation because Kurt Warner went five and two and the Giants lost two games where the offense looked really bad in that two game span and they were five and four and the Giants went to Eli Manning after that. Well, it was too much pressure to play Eli in the first place. Honestly. No, I was to me it was the right move. It was the, your, your future was not where Kurt Warner. Like the, yeah, but, I have no pro, I have no problem with them playing Eli Manning at that point. No, but I, I thought it was I thought it was even though Eli sucked when they first put him in, I thought it was good for him because those games at five and four they meant something. Like you're seeing yeah. him playing at that time of year. You're playing against teams that are playing for stuff. And your team is playing for an opportunity to go to the playoffs. You're in the shit. Now you do you do a rookie quarterback an injustice by starting him in week nine in that situation. You're probably better off starting him earlier in the season if that's the case. But yeah, you get the point. No, I hundred percent. I mean, I, no, I, I think the rookies should play. I'm not. I'm not gonna lie. You know, I, I was over Eli last season. But, hey, if this is his last year, I, I don't even give a crap if he plays the whole damn season. If this is his last year, this is his last year. He's, I don't see, I don't see, really see a way he gets extended unless he plays out of his mind, which I don't see happening. I don't, even, in practice, I don't even, in, uh, even in practice, even in practice, they're saying, they're showing, they're saying, he, uh, if Daniel Jones is outplaying Eli. There's a big difference, though, Tim, between playing with red shirts on. I mean, yeah, I I, I don't. I mean, I want to. I need, and that's why. And even in preseason, like even in preseason, like it's not gonna, it's not gonna do anything for me at all. Like I, I need to see him on Sunday afternoons, not Friday nights. Not Saturday nights. I need to see him on Sunday afternoons, Thursday nights, and Monday nights. Good, bad, ugly, four interceptions, three touchdowns, I'll, two fumbles, whatever I'll it is, another, you need I'll to see you him scenario. and go through it. What happens, let's say, uh, Giants are 2 0 for the. Only time it's ever happened, Eli gets hurt. Daniel Jones has to start. Plays, let's say, a few weeks. Uh, let's say he goes one and two. You bring Eli back in. I know you no. want it. No, <laughs> yeah. they would. I know. You know. What Eli you'd, you'd hear the out. whole. You'd hear the whole. You'd hear the whole. We're not gonna. We can't. You know. You know. Guys shouldn't lose it. Lose their job because of injuries. And you know we'll, we'll get the whole spiel, um, you know we'll, we'll, the, the, whatever line of fucking bullshit they want to spit to us that the E Hive will love. 
and and they would come right back to Eli. No, there's no way they should do that. You turn the page at that point, and you go to Daniel Jones. If they're one and two, right, unless he's looked completely inept, you know. I mean, here's here's the thing: if he looks god awful and it's an embarrassment, then then yeah, you go back to Eli. But if the kid shows a fucking pulse at all, you gotta play him and stay with him. You took him at six. Yeah, and and that's really the thing with Eli. That's why he got put in so quick because. He got to take it really number one overall. And that's yeah. I mentioned number one overall. We traded a whole lot of draft picks for. I mean, and, and it's and, and no one complained when they did that. You know, no one at, no one complained because it, it was the move that I, made sense. I, 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 I we knew, that we draft. knew, we I want, knew at I want five and four. I, I, we knew, first of all, we knew that team at five and two was probably playing above their heads a little bit. Okay. Um, yeah. with Warner, um, and we knew that probably was not a Super Bowl roster. So if you have the quarterback, what the fuck are you wasting time for? Get the kid in the game and, and let the kid play. And and I got news for you. Eli, during the last half of the year, other than that Dallas game, the very last game of the year, was atrocious. He He, he flashed a little in the game at home against Pittsburgh, but other than that, I mean, go watch the go watch the game in Baltimore in his rookie year. My God, <laughs> try to get through that giant fans. Yeah, but it was, was all necessary. Bad. But it was all necessary. And I got news for you, I Tim, most cap the negative. Every incompletion, every hit he took, every fumble, every intercept, uh, clapping. All right, kid. All right. All right. Yeah. Get up. Because honestly, they were all good. Get up. Even and, and Ben, who won, even he, Ben, who won that Super Bowl that year, he was it was the worst QB rating ever in a Super Bowl. He he didn't do anything. That you know. No, that was, was the run the game, game in the defense. defense. Yeah, yep. that was the run game in the defense. That and 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 he knew that, and he knew that he 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 made yep. plays when he had to make plays. And he had he had his legs at that point, Roethlisberger. I mean, he still has them, but he, back then he had them more. So he was able to scamper. Question. He was in third and short situations, and he was able to make plays. Question. And his, so, and, go ahead. Here, here's the deal. Supposedly, you know, going back in the day, if Giants couldn't get, figure out that Eli trade, they were going to take Ben at four. They took Rivers yeah. for San Diego. They would have took Ben. Would yeah, you, they would have taken, they had, would have taken Rob would you, would you rather have had Ben or Eli? Oh, Eli. That's, that's, that's where I'm at. I think Eli's more clutch. Yeah. No, I, and I, I, don't think, I don't think Ben. I don't, I don't, I don't, have, ben I don't have, have any. I don't have any qualms with Eli Manning. I, I went crazy when they made the trade for him. I was at his first training camp practice. I drove to Albany. I, I my, my qualms with Eli Manning have nothing to do with his career as, as a New York Giant. He is the greatest quarterback, and this is from someone who's uh, my favorite Giant player of all time is Phil Simms. And I will tell you yep. face-to-face and man-to-man that Eli Manning is the greatest quarterback that this franchise has ever had. It's it's not and, you know, even the, debatable. Just, and just to end on it, like with Eli, it was positive. You remember all the times when he was in his his prime. It was fourth quarter. We're close. Was even uh, thought that we wouldn't tie it up or no, go for a win. Here, here's it. Was, it's not even Tim. It's not even that. It, it's it's how he it, it's how he handled himself. It, yeah. it was it was the quiet confidence. It 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 was nice. It, it was nice to just always know that that number you know number ten was going to be right there, right? And 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 yeah. I have I have no problem with the four interception games, the five interception games, the the two or three fumble games, the the ugly games that we've had because I, I've accepted the fact that you know what that's the player. That's Eli Manning. 
But you know what? The other, the flip side of Eli Manning is if you get him in the right situation and you put the right team around him, that he will have ice cold fucking blood in his veins, and he will get you a run, and he can make plays in the clutch, and he can make a a, a play that'll win you a win you a ring and put a trophy in the case, right? And and even 100%. even two years ago, Tim, when when I was screaming that it was over and it was time to move on, it would. W- you can go back and check the tape. We, I said that if you put Eli in, in, in Jacksonville, there's a chance that with that team around him, that when you get him into the dance, that he may be able to make a run. Or if you put him in the right situation with a good defense and a good running game, that he may have a chance to get you, if you can get into the playoffs, you may have a chance to make a run with Eli as your quarterback. To me, it was more a referendum on the Giants roster, that the roster was not able to win now and you're building around a quarterback that isn't good enough to uplift that roster. No, so what the they, fuck they, are you doing? They, they did him a disservice for quite a while as far as the drafting and people and they brought in. that's not a referendum on Eli Manning. That, that's yeah, not that Eli's fault. fault. That's management's fault for not being able to separate the fact and saying, okay, Eli, thank you. It's time for us to move on and go in a different direction. That is not Eli Manning's fault. The he only want to be the, the only Giants thing quarterback. The thing, and I, I, I remember we, we talked about the Jacksonville trade. And we talked about a, ball, I don't, a couple I don't other think teams, because too. The way Eli is, I don't think he can take over a locker room like that and just come in midseason and be like, all right, you know, follow me to the promised land kind of thing. There's no way. No, not, not at all, Tim. being able to do that. Tim, but if you would have went to him, like, let, let, I mean, we, there's not a lot going on in Giant Glendale next week, so let's throw out a hypothetical, right? It, you sit down, you're gentlemen, it, it's day one on the job, you're looking at the situation, you see the draft coming out, you know you're picking two, and you know that they're picking Baker one. Okay. You can't tell me that you can't go to Eli Manning at that point in the offseason and go, listen, Eli, I'm drafting Darnold. Okay? Listen, I, I have to see the kid this year. Now, going into camp, I'm not going to disrespect you. It's going to be an open competition. But if the team is bad, and I got news for you, this roster, I'm rebuilding it, and I'm gutting it a little bit. We're going to have a new system. So there's going to be some bumps and grinds. So you can anticipate maybe not having the best roster with our cap situation and things like that, right? So I don't know that I can field the best team around you. So at some point during the season, there's going to be an awkward situation for you because guess what, Eli? I'm going to have to see the kid, right? So I'm going to give you a chance right now to say, okay, you can waive your no trade clause and I can look and you can make some calls and I'll give you the ability and your agent the ability to go out and seek a trade out of respect for you and what you've done for your franchise so that you're in a situation that you want to be in. And you can go ahead or you can come back. Yeah, I mean, I understand. He, he 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 never wanted to leave. He said really from day one, that he wanted but to say with one of course franchise. He doesn't. But, but but that's but and but that's on ownership and that's on the the GM and that's on those guys to make the decision and be blunt fully honest with the and, and put them in a situation that says, Hey, here it is. And if Eli said I'm not waiving my no trade clause, I'm coming back and winning the job, tip of the cap, kid. No problem. Come back, win the job. But if we're three and seven, guess what? Darnold's playing. <laughs> yeah. Right? And, and uh, I mean, so uh, it, it's not Eli's fault, the situation um, that's occurred. It, it's management's fault. But here we well, are. And uh, uh, well, now we got the situation with situation, Daniel Jones. It would have been almost turned into the Kurt Warner, Eli, you know, the Kurt Warner, Eli thing. Well, now we it got that situation like, with Danny Jones. Because now, I mean, it's now it's not Darnold, but the writing's on the wall. That even if that conversation did not take place, how we just put it about Darnold, oh no, this, a trade this clause, year is literally there had to be a conversation that took place about, hey man, listen, <laughs> I may need to see Jones this year. Well, it, that was probably the conversation after you. I was like, hey, let's talk about their extension. Yeah, let's talk about how much you're gonna play this season. <laughs> you know, that's that's gotta be the conversation right now. It's Eli knows he's not coming back. Eli probably knows this is probably this is last year. And you know, it's all good. You know, if this is this is it, if this is it. We just want we have our quarterback for the future. It's hope hopefully. And that that's really the biggest question mark is 
hopefully, you know, Daniel Jones is the answer. Oh, well, that's, uh, there you go. And and that's, that's, that's really the, all. Let's hope. Let's hope because I know all of us Dave Brown people, thank God he didn't wear 17. Yeah. <laughs> if he wore 17, I would have la- I, I laughed inside a little bit because like, I almost think he was trolling people. <laughs> well, he seems like but the type of guy he... that would not have a problem trolling people. Well, and that, that's and from what I've heard, you know, <laughs> it would have been kind of funny if he wore 17, but. No, nah, too many flashbacks. Those, those years oh, I don't know that I would have been able. Yeah, I don't know that I would have been able to stomach that. Those, just, those are some dark years. Oh, oh. My God. Yeah, you ain't Dave lying, Brown. Man. You know what? It was right when I, I loved Rodney Hampton, and that was when he was tearing it up. It was he was our whole offense. Yep. I uh, I don't even want to talk about Dave Brown. <laughs> I don't even want to talk about it. Mm-hmm. Other than that was, Daniel uh, Jones, who's, the, who's the, the number one rookie you're like really excited to see on our team? Yeah. Um. Oh, I, all right. I, I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you a guy, Conley. You know, he's it, it, definitely one of my undercards. Where like, from what I've heard. Conley's been tearing it up, and they're like, it's not a matter of uh, when he, if, if he's going to start. It's a matter of when he's going to start. Uh, he he's the he's my uh, he's the guy that I'm most excited to see. Well, I I I, oh, I liked Baker coming out. I like his swag. I like Baker a lot. I've said before yeah. on the show that I love Baker, and I'm excited to see him. So I'm not going to put that name out there. I'll, I'll give that. I'll give you Conley. Conley would probably be the guy. That I'm most excited to see. I think that he could be really, um, really useful in coverage and in Betch's scheme of blitzing. I think he has exceptional timing when it comes to to uh, being able to blitz, timing it, penetrating the yeah. backfield, and disrupting some stuff. So I'm I'm anxious to see um, how they use him, and I think that they're going to use him a lot, especially in today's NFL. Yeah. You better be able to cover, and one thing he can do. Um, at least, at least he did on the college level, was cover well from the linebacker spot. So we'll see how that uh, translates at the NFL level. But I'm excited to see that kid. I I, 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 hope, I know a lot uh, of people were talking about him and uh, Tay Davis is going to start in the middle. PJ Goodson might be the odd man out as far as the starting. Yeah, you you know there there can be some surprise cuts. BJ is a guy that that could end up being on the chopping block. I I don't think he, but he's not all around linebacker. I'm I'm very I mean, surprised that they kept Ogletree at the cap number he's at. But I like Ogletree, and he played better at the end of the season. I was excited when he I'm came. A, I'm excited to see Carter and I'm excited to see Carter and Hill. Those are the two guys that I think that you if those guys take the next step. Then I think that the other guys can just play football. I, I think that if Hill ends up being a, a really good football player on that line, I think that he'll make the other guys better and they're talented enough where, um, you know, they'll be they'll be dangerous. And then I, I think that if Carter could be the guy that can get to the passer, if he can be that pass rusher, if he can be that playmaker from the linebacker spot that they've been missing, um, I think they have enough pieces to be really interesting on defense. Um, and, and, also, then, and then it comes to my guy is I'm looking at Dexter Lawrence. When Dexter Lawrence, yeah. I I think he's gonna be just disruptor in the middle, completely just disrupting plays in the middle. And especially I'm, if BJ I'm Hill, curious to see, if BJ Hill I'm, takes that next step forward with Tomlinson on the other side as well, that's a pretty good damn defensive line. Well, I'm I'm curious to see if Lawrence can get to the quarterback at the NFL level. Uh, I, I don't know I, I don't know that he could. I hope that he could. Um, I, I think that he's going to be really good against the run. I think he has a shit ton of talent. I, I'm, I'm hopeful that his game translates on the NFL level where he could put pressure on the quarterback. Now, if Hill comes along 
and Carter comes along, then that means a lot of one-on-ones for him. And hopefully, you know, that, that leads to some quarterback pressures. They, they have to find a way to get pressure on the quarterback. And, and here, here's the other thing about this team. They are so young in the secondary right now. They are so young when you take away Bethea yeah. and Jenkins. Uh, there, there's going to be a lot of kids playing back there this year. I think that Giant fans really need to prepare themselves that what you see now is not necessarily what you're going to get later. I think that there, there's going to be a, a transition uh, for some of these kids playing at the NFL level. You're going to probably see some penalties early in the season. You're going to probably see some uh, missed coverages early in the season, right? But but uh, have some patience with these guys because Rome was a building a day, especially with young secondary pieces. You've got to let them progress because nowadays I, I it's think, just so difficult yeah. to play defense in the NFL. Uh, at this point, I really is, you know, and obviously health being – Hopefully health works out. There's going to be a lot of Baker and Jenkins playing man on man, and you know whoever's playing the slot. See, I'm I'm hoping that Jones plays a lot this season, some way, shape, or form, because to me that eliminates the the uh, to me the games become completely different when Jones gets in there, right? Like, mm-hmm. I wake up on Sunday morning not caring if we win or lose if Jones is our starting quarterback. I want to win. I'm cheering for yeah. wins. But I don't care if we win or lose if Daniel Jones is our starting quarterback. Why? You're crazy. Why wouldn't you want to, why do you, why do you not care? Well, because here's the thing. I just want to see with, with the team that we have, I just want to see these who's going to be around. Who are the guys that are popping on Sundays during the game that say, "Okay, all right, now with another good draft and all this money in free agency, who can I get fired up on now that I got a young quarterback with a year under his belt that's going to progress?" Where are we going in 2020 and beyond? Like that, that's when I will say, okay, let's ex- start expect winning football games. This year with Daniel Jones, it would be, let me just see some good football. Let me see this kid progress. Let me see this kid take some chances. Let me see DeAndre yeah. Baker make a play or get burnt. But it's, you know what I'm saying? It's just, it, it's no, a you different brought up, feel. You brought up a great, great question because literally, so let, let's, say, this, this year, let's be honest. This year we're probably not making playoffs. It is a really young team. I'm not saying it's impossible. We have a really young team. We could, they have talent to make a run, but I'm not expecting it. They don't have so, a lot of depth. They don't have a lot so of depth. You need some depth. The whole the defense NFL. is, the is young as crap. Yes. The whole defense is young as crap. Other than Ogletree and uh, who the hell is their safety right now? The old ass. Uh, who's their but safety? They, or Mike yeah, Thomas. Yeah, Either one is old. Yeah, yeah. Bethea, Mike Thomas, Ogletree. Those are really the only veterans that are on that defense that are have more than have more than like three years of experience. Then you got the whole you know the whole offense is pretty damn young, other than a few people there too. So let's say we this year went by, Daniel Jones is starting, Eli retired, whatever, blah blah blah. If you had to pick a player, and I, you know, this is just off the top of your head, what position would you go for, or, or what what person would you be like? You know what? Go after them because you know we're gonna have tons of money. Oh well, I would first. I would need to see who's gonna be available. Um, it's very true. Well, let, let's say pretty uh, much everybody. I, I, yeah, I don't. Um, Shepard signs. I, I, I'll tell you this. Okay, there, there's a name. Ingram. There's been a name. There's a name that's been in the media over the last couple of days, and I, I haven't even clicked on it because I don't want to get teased because I like the guy. Um, if they got their hands on on Merciless, I'd be really happy. Interesting. Yeah. What do you about Merciless? Huh? What have you heard about him? Well, I heard uh, th- th- there was a rumor that there, I guess there's something going on that he may be cut bait or there's a problem with his contract or they could be looking to move him and that the Giants might possibly be interested. There was on a couple. It was on Twitter. Um, I don't really know who said it. I don't. I didn't. Like I said, I didn't even click on it. Yeah, I yeah. didn't want to be teased. I didn't see it from any reputable places. I, but I, just the I name. Like the name intrigued me because I like him as a player. But I didn't yeah. hold any merit to it, so I didn't really pay it any fucking mind. But if you well, ask he's me, a, he's a middle linebacker. He's a middle linebacker, right? 
Well, that, but yeah, he's a middle. I, I would I would project him and Betch's defense to play in the middle. But I look at the Giants' middle linebacker. I think he would be an upgrade over Ogletree. Um, and and you know, and you got two middle linebacker spots there. And to me, a guy like Merciless is just a good football player, right? I mean, you just like just line him up. Like I think he could probably play any of your linebacker spots, really. Um, Very true. I, Right, I so would love I, I don't, the Giants to stack up on linebackers like they used to do in the old days. I mean, I would, I, I would love, love to have a couple of impact linebackers, not just one. Um, so if, I think that if there was any possibility to bring that guy in, you know, uh, Clowney is not a guy that really interests me. I mean, I don't, and, and I'm totally against. He hasn't made has the impact that he should have, but I really think they, he should not have went to a three four. I don't want I think to spend he should be money. Fourth. I think you should be a four three all day. I don't want to spend money just to spend money. I don't. I, I don't that. want them. I don't want them to go out and just say, okay, we, we like is the is that juice worth the squeeze? Like I don't know that Clowney necessarily is worth all of the money that he's going to get paid from somebody. I think he's a very attractive name, and I think he pops on film sometimes. But I don't know during a sixteen game season. Or during the course of five years over a 16-game season, if you're going to get the value of that contract, I, I you, think you need to be really careful about what you do and how you do it. Or you're going to end up in another Vernon Harrison clusterfuck situation from a couple of years ago. So, you know, there, there's nothing wrong with with going and targeting maybe a, a couple of cheaper, younger players that say are coming out of their rookie contract that are ascending, you know what I'm saying? That couldn't yeah. get signed under, you know, like a guy this year that, that, yeah, is, that, that was guy. a guy I, that we, Zadarius Smith was a guy this year where that me and you both in free agency were like, man, if we can get your hand, get your hands on that guy, I think he could be a really good football player. Those would be the, the guys, He was in a like good the guys year that are about to take it to the next paid. level. But you know what? I, I would love them to go get a free safety. Obviously, you get, they, uh, get a free safety. I'm, as far as who, I'm trying to think who would even be available. See, I don't know that I want to spend on that. Here, here's you know what I want to do. Here's what I want to you do. You know I what? Go get but I do remember them tackle. spending. That Can I go get an actual left tackle? Can I go get an actual left tackle? And while I'm at I, it, I'd be, I go get I'd be an fine with offensive right line tackle. all day. I'd be fine with offensive line all day, and there is a chance that Notre Dame kid. That we drafted, I uh, love that he might play free safety. And I wouldn't. And Kim, I, I got news for you. I got news for you. I wouldn't be wasting a draft pick on a tackle. I have enough money to go out and get myself a proven commodity, somebody that I know can play on the NFL level. I'm sick. Yeah, I'm I agree fucking with that. Tired. I, agree. I mean, you, and and I'm not against. I'm not. You want you want to use a draft pick on a tackle in the second or third round and bring that kid in to groom for the right tackle because you don't have a right tackle either. Giants fans, yeah. you don't have a right tackle either. All right, Remmers is is not a right tackle. He is a band aid on a broken limb. Okay, and that's a that's that's a limb that could start bleeding any fucking second right now. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna tell and you there's right not now, a lot of depth on that offensive on line. Wheeler. As much as people hate on Chad Wheeler, I'm not saying he's the answer at all. He, he can still play some ball, some Chad, Chad Wheeler, if we need if we needed to. I'm not, yeah, I'm but not, he's not. He's not a guy. You're not going to win with. You're not. You're not going to win with him. You're not going to win with him. <laughs> he he shouldn't even. He you know if if you're he shouldn't be your backup. Like I'm sorry, he, like, he, nothing he against both Chad sides. Willer. He, he shouldn't he be played both sides. There's, be, nice there, part. there's better guys out there. There's better talent somewhere. Like I, I'm sorry, Other, nothing against Chad Wheeler. There's better talent somewhere in the NFL to back and, you up at left and, tackle, and to, hope, at right tackle. Let's hope that Kentucky tackle that is drafted is the answer at right tackle. I would hope that that, that would be nice, wouldn't it be? Well. Is they they talk good about him. He's he's one of those kids that, that you know, as far as the coaches said, is like literally makes a mistake and he fixes fixes it by next play. So we'll we'll see. Yeah, Obviously, I don't. We, we don't I, I I I can't get fired up about a seventh round pick or a sixth round until I see them on Sundays. Like I don't all the nice words that are written about him, all the the shit in training camp, like. 
I need to see it on Sundays against a pass rush, against somebody that's trying to kill the quarterback. Like I, yeah. Well, that's one thing they said. The main reason that kid probably got drafted was he was going against Josh Allen every practice. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I would hope I hope that they struck gold, man, because I think that they can use it. Now, I, I, I think that, that I don't I don't like Solder. I'm not a Solder guy, man. I, I don't think I don't think he's very fucking good. Uh, he, he's, uh, he he's he's uh, what he's all right. Is he what he we should pay for? We paid more because that's just what the market was. If we wanted if we wanted him, we had to pay that. Yeah, but, see, but that's what I mean, Tim, about about like not Have, yeah, like, having the like, pay like for it. If you and like, I, yeah, all right, I need I need a I need a I need a left tackle, right? But if the if you look out there and the left tackles that are available are awful, or they're they're in their tenth, eleventh year, they've never been to a Pro Bowl. How can you look at yourself in the mirror and say I'm going to make this guy the highest paid left tackle in the league and tie myself to him for the next four to five years? Like to me, at that well, point, you, you you're better off using the draft pick by assessing the situation. But that ship is now sailed. Yeah, but you know what? It also gets the best. You also don't want too many young players on the same, you know, in the same position. You need a veteran influence somewhere. The show. No, I'm looks, sorry. You know, I'm sorry. I, I and, did, I, and and so and Solder knows how to win. Talent, yeah, so talent prevails. Win. Young talent prevails, and let them play and work it out together over the course of time. If you, and that's why assessing, and that's why it comes down to management assessing the roster and the situation and making the decisions wisely to do so. I mean, can you can you imagine right now if if they would have taken Tunsil over fucking Eli Apple? Oh. Yeah. Don't even get me going on that. I was like, I was, right. dude, I saw you put that stuff on Twitter it's about Tunsil. I'm like, oh, we could have had him. It would have been nice. We could have. It was sitting there for us, right? They yeah. reach for they reach for Eric Flowers, a guy that was was late was a late round pick. I mean, just well, it, it was just, <laughs> it, you know, it was, the kid had a freaking uh, you know, weed mask on or whatever the hell. It just it was just bad but, timing. But, it was just like but, the, but Gettleman but it was just the, like the, the right Collins. way to go about but sometimes dude the right way to go about fixing those issues isn't exactly to just throw money at anyone. And that's you know, what that's I, I what agree. Reese did I agree and with it's that. sort of what it's sort of it's what it's what Reese did with the defense and it's sort of what, what he did with Solder on the offensive line, what Gettleman did with Solder on the offensive line. That was a horrible contract. Horrible. Oh, it's, it's um, a horrible contract, but the, the, so I would love next year. I hope with the money that they're going to have available, that they really address the offensive line. That they really a center, a, a, a fucking a, a center, and two tackles would be really nice. I'm going to tell you right now, and I can't think of the kid's name off the top of my head right now. Um, undrafted kid who's a, he's a center now. At the University of Buffalo, uh, he's really good. He's it's encouraging actually, that you can't tell me his name. You well, I've, I, I've been out of the, I've been out of the game. I've been, I've drank a lot over the past month. I've um, been drinking for the last month. <laughs> it's just uh, oh, I can't think of his name. But whatever, he was like the third rated third rated center in the whole damn uh, in, in all of college. He's just he's a little undersized, and that that was the reason he you know went undrafted. He's good. I he, I think he's gonna make the team. I think he's gonna be good. But they also have Jalapio, and they also have um, what's his name, uh, Tully. Or sure. Spencer Tully, or, yeah. So they they got people to play center, but I, I don't I'm. I'm with you as far as let's let's get some tackles in there. Hopefully that Kentucky kid works out for the right tackle position. It would be who nice. knows. And then if all we had to do was worry about a left tackle, honestly, I would go into the draft, especially because more than likely, let's, let's be honest, we'll probably be drafted in the top 15, right? If it goes the season where we think it's going to go. 
I would. I mean, I would, and that's the other advantage of pro, playing Jones is you probably get to surround them with some quality young talent. If you have a shitty season this year, you get a high draft pick next year. True. But if that's the case, let's say we get top fifteen. Go get the damn. Uh, go get the damn left tackle. Finish off that offensive line. They're all be young. They can all grow together. Done. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't even mind drafting a guy that can that can play right tackle and using the money to go get a quality left tackle at the NFL level. But here's the problem: is they still got Solder on the contract. So what you're probably better off doing, or more realistic actually, is that they're going to draft a guy that they could bring in to play the tackle spot, leave Solder at the left tackle spot for another year, and then groom yeah. that kid as a right tackle, and then probably move him over to the left tackle spot when they get rid of Solder coming out of maybe the year after next going into 2021, right? You draft the kid, you let him play at right tackle. Maybe you give him a little bit of left tackle during the season or in practice, and then maybe you get rid of Solder and save some money on that contract in that last year if you have a kid that's ready to play and you move him over to the left side. You would think that sooner or later they have to get some depth and some more quality players on that offensive line. And I think I think that – this year is where I, I'm really excited about the defense. I, I think, you know, the offense has some pieces. I think with Beckham, sometimes you do get that addition by subtraction thing where, you know, you, you may lose the, the big fish, but um, some other guys step up and it's more of a team effort. It's more of a team atmosphere. And, you know, maybe, you know, some guys end up developing and taking the next step. My thing is I don't know how good the offensive line is. And if injuries hit, I don't. I, I don't think there's a lot of depth whatsoever for them to to withstand that. So. Um, well, that, that's the thing. I don't again, think we have right depth, back to the offensive line tackle position at all. Tackle position. I don't see depth. I don't see depth a lot. I don't see depth on that offensive line anymore. I I don't see Tim. I don't see depth. A lot of depth on the roster. But the offensive line scares me because I think that has the. I think that that the, the tackles in the center. I'm not too fond of. Um, to start off. So I, I at least like the young talent and the starters that we're going to have on defense. It's some of the depth behind them that I think you have to build over the next couple of years through um, free agency and the draft and, and stuff like that. I think that you'll start to to build the back end of this roster if you're smart about it um, and make some good decisions. But right now, I don't know that they have a, a, a good enough 53 to compete and realistically for a playoff spot. You can't turn off the injuries, unfortunately. Well, that's that's very true, and that's the one thing I'm, you're making me think about as far as what we're going to have to pay for. Because we're so damn young, I really don't know who's coming up on contract next year that's that we need to pay, that we have to pay. I don't. I don't think that there's really. I mean, I think Shepard was if, the only if you, one that. If you, here's was, the thing: is they any, any of the young players. So I mean, just I, I don't know it because I haven't I haven't looked at it. Uh, Shepard signed. I mean, Ingram, Ingram, Ingram would be the and, only one that I would think you maybe, may, but you they may have a situation where you need to resign him. They probably put the fifth year option on him. I would Matter imagine so, but you would yet. think that if but but you're gonna have enough money to where you probably can lock him up long term and get that deal done. Yep. It all matters on how much if, you know. If, they, if he if, they start if, using he the out, season. if he shows out this season, if he shows up and plays well, and he's a main cog in that offense, which there's no reason why he shouldn't be, um, then yeah. yes, then hundred percent, then you're looking at a situation where there'll be enough money for for them to either do one of the two. You would think that they would sign them long term um, at that point. So I, I would think, yeah. not looking at it, that Ingram would probably be the only guy that may be coming up where they have to have that conversation because. It, He's the only guy, really, that I could think of young that you would want to keep left over from Reese. Yeah. Because the, the, everybody everybody from Gettleman is just, you know, they're still on the rookie contract from only last year. This class is this year. So who who's the leftovers from the Reese, con, from the Reese years that you're going to want to invest in long term? The only one that I could think of right now, uh, unless I'm missing somebody, is um is Ingram? I mean, maybe what? Maybe Davlin Tomlinson? Maybe. I mean, 
But if but you, but if you, you know, just Giants, took Lawrence and you have B.J. Hill. Giants never pay for defense you, tackles. If you just took – exactly. If you just took Lawrence and B.J. Hill, you know, w- w- what the hell – you know, you could find another guy. Uh, so, yeah, I, I would say yeah. – I would say looking at it, it, there's nobody at cornerback. There's nobody at linebacker. There's nobody on the offensive line. They just re-signed Shepard. They took Ingram the year after Shepard, didn't they? The Ingram the year after Shepard. Sounds right. Yes. So, yeah, you would think that Ingram's coming up because he was a first-round pick. Well, now, now hold on, though. You may, you may be right because if Ingram – if Ingram was a first-round pick, which he Ingram was, was, you have that fifth-year option. You have the fifth-year option anyway. So you have so this would be his where Shepard was a fourth-round pick. So he played three years. You just re-signed him. You took him the year after that. You may have you may have well, then, you may not word. even have to re-sign Ingram. You may have Ingram on a fourth year next year, I and think not you're right. even I have to have that year. conversation till the end of 2020. Yeah, because of I think you're yeah. right, right? Yeah, because yeah, I'm not 100 percent on that, but just 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 talking it out loud, it seems like that you I'm, that I think that Ingram is probably he's only going his going third, third season. Is, isn't this third Ingram's year? Third season? He's going third into year now. Yeah, yeah, it's his third year. So you have him under contract yeah, solid for two more four years, years you want him. and then you have the fifth year option. So you don't have to negotiate like you did with Shepard a year early. You can wait yeah. with Ingram. And have that conversation going into the following season instead of doing that fifth year option and lock him up long term. So you really have access to all of those funds next year, um, where you don't have to worry about locking up a lot of your own young talent. You can use that to either you can use that for a couple of things, man. I mean, you can use that to say, okay, either we're gonna go out shopping or we're going to save some of the cap because we think that in a couple of years we're going to have to re-sign B.J. Hill, and we're going to re-sign Lorenzo Carter, and we're going to re-sign DeAndre Baker, and we're going to have to re-sign Barker. And, you know, I mean, you could you could strategically say where if you hit on some of these picks and you like them over the next years, you don't have to go apeshit crazy next year. And, and, that's the key, and that's the key to the problem with what Reese was doing. Reese didn't hit on enough draft picks. Which made us overspend. Yeah, yeah, you got to get on draft. Which that's where uh, that's where I'm a big fan of Gettleman. I like the way he drafts. I, I mean, other than Daniel Jones, is one is you know that's a whole other argument. Well, I don't, I don't like, I, I, don't like, I, I like the way he builds the team. I don't like, I don't like how he drafts. Him. I shouldn't say that. I'm going to say this. I hate how he handles the first round. Okay. I hated you, how he handled you, in both look, drafts. Look, look. I hated how he handled the first round. Okay, let's take this away. If he took, let's say he just took Josh Allen at the pick that we thought he we were going to get anyway. Yep. Let's say he took Josh Allen. If if he did that, and then the rest of the first round ended up the same way, would you have a problem? No. Okay. I wouldn't have a I wouldn't have a problem if they I wouldn't have a problem if it ended up the same way. I wouldn't have a problem if Josh Allen was that pick and then Jones was seventeen and then they made the same move to move up and get Baker. I wouldn't have a problem if they took Allen and then Baker at seventeen and made the trade up to get Jones into the first round. I wouldn't have a problem either. Yeah, I mean, this, and that's really the whole thing is we we all we're like salivating over Josh Allen going to come, going to be our next uh, LT. And you yeah, know, I was uh, I was uh, immensely disappointed. Um, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I don't. And I like some of the guys that he took late. I like Conley. I, you knew I like Ballantyne. I like. I like some of these guys. I, I like Carter. Uh, I like B.J. Hill. Um, but but I, I don't. I, I, I and I like Barkley. I just don't like the pick. Um, well, well and that's the thing though is if he's hitting on the late round picks, that means we can have depth. And then that's really the biggest thing. If well, you that, can't and, and that's your why late, I, your and late that's round why picks. I, you can't. Yeah. You, you got to overspend. 
And that's why I said earlier was, and that's why right now, I don't know that he's had enough time over the course of two years to build the depth needed on an NFL roster because you're not going to hit on every pick. Uh, it's, it's impossible. So, yeah. you're, you know, it, it takes time to build a 53-man roster with all these moving pieces and injuries and shit you're not expecting. So, um, hopefully, you know, that it, it, these some of these guys take the next step and then he's able to build on it. And, and some of the guys he took this year hit and – we just keep moving forward. But when it comes down to it, it's all going to be about Daniel Jones. If Daniel Jones is a player, we'll be fine. If Daniel Jones isn't a player, uh, then, we, and then we, we still need a quarterback. Well, if Daniel Jones isn't a player, then we'll probably have a new GM and we'll yep. have a new coach anyway. Yep, 100%. 100%. So I think it all comes down to um, Daniel Jones. I mean, and and if, if, he's, if he's the sixth pick of the draft, if he develops like a sixth pick in the draft should, if he is the guy that to, to fall in full bloom love with, um, then the New York Giants will be fine. If, if he's not, then the search continues. I, I hope he has the attitude that you talk about. It just, I think he does. I, don't give, I think he does. I don't that, give a shit. Atti- the, I don't yeah, give a shit. He has attitude. that Grayson Allen effect on people. <laughs> he does. I, he really does. I, you know, yeah, I, I'm all for it because it'll be like you just said. Well, either you're as a giant fan, him. I love it. Yeah, as a giant fan, I as a giant fan, I love it. He seems to me like he's one of those guys, especially uh, in, in the little period of time, the the little window of time I got to interact with him and and observe him a little bit. Um, he seems like one of those guys that just doesn't give a shit when anybody thinks about him whatsoever. Um, he's going to go about his business. He has a little chip on his shoulder. He has a little swag. Um, I think that he is one of those guys that if he's on your team, you love him. And if he's not on your team, you hate him. And I think it's going to be great having a quarterback like that. Now, here's the thing. Let's hope he can play. His personality is one thing, but you better be able to show up and sling it on Sundays, baby. Yeah, uh, and you know what? I just like the fact that he's he's somewhat mobile. He's actually more mobile than most of the quarterbacks that actually came out this draft. It, it's gonna be a, a little bit of a change. It, just, just a little nice. Well, yeah, and and it, that's nice. But here, but I, and and you know, but it's going to come down to throwing the football. Like I don't want oh, him I'll, making a living with his legs. Like yeah, if you I want to change it up here and there, and you you have a you have a play here and a play there, but I, I don't want this to be Lamar Jackson. Like I, I want my quarterback using his legs to to move away out of the pocket and make a throw, right? And then and here's the other thing about Daniel Jones, and I give the kid credit because he is fucking tough. Uh, when you watch his film. I don't love his film, but one thing you do take away from his film is that he is a tough son of a bitch, um, is that he fights a lot to get extra yardage in college. He took a lot of unnecessary hits fighting for extra yardage in college. If you're going to run and you're going to scamper, recognize that eight yards and not getting decapitated is better than a first down sometimes because you're the starting quarterback, and without you, we're fucked. So I think that he needs to take care of his body when it comes to scampering like he does. Um, and he can't make it a living to to live off his legs. He needs to make reads and he needs to make throws. Or we go to Kyle Aletta. Or we're <laughs> fucked. I saw somebody say the other day, uh, do you see the Giants if Jones plays bad this year? Do you see the Giants taking Herbert and trading Jones much like um, Arizona did this Arizona. year? And I, I, I almost threw my phone, man. I was like, no. No, the Giants aren't doing that. Do I you think the Giants I, I, really just, hope, I really hope not. I, I you think, think it's the just Giants, a waste. Tim, it, it's not, it would never happen. Here, here's why. You think that this team, right, as proud as they fucking are and how their name has just been ran through the butt, they signed, they signed Odell Beckham Jr., and they trade him the next year. 
and then they draft a quarterback at six and trade him the year after that. You want to talk about a fucking no conviction in what you're doing? No, like you're a laughing stock at that point. Like how? If you're gonna do that, you have to fire Gettleman. Like you can't yeah. have Gettleman pick two quarterbacks, right? Like you can't. Like oh, I was wrong on this one. I'll get the next one right. Like no, 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 no. no. And, and the way the quarterbacks so, are going next year, that means we'd be drafting like the top five or six. Yeah. So um, it's all on it's Wait. all on Jonesy. Keep up with the Joneses. And and Shermer's supposed to be a quarterback guy. So let, let's let's see you do your work. Well, I, I just yeah. Uh, let, let's hopefully we get to see Shermer, um, the, the work that Shermer is putting in with him. Uh, by Jones actually playing on Sunday afternoon. So uh, that's going to be it. I mean, when it comes down to it, I think this season, the main theme of this season is going to be pretty simple. It's going to be uh, how how much did we see Daniel Jones and was that enough to feel good or indifferent or fucking horrified about going into 2020? So we shall see. Wow. Did you, is there any uh, way that let's, if Jones played any? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Me, I just got one question. If Jones played really shit, like how shitty does he have to play for you to be like, we need to draft a quarterback immediately? Oh, no, for me, for me, not at all, because I I would have never drafted him in the first place. <laughs> so you you don't have to sell me on if Herbert's available. Would I? No, I would. Yeah, I, I'd have no problem being like, bye bye, Danny. I'm going after Herbert or it, from or it's something. Just me, it's just me, or does Herbert? Herbert bothers me that he didn't come out. I think he it bothers me a little bit that he didn't come out too, Tim. But when I look at, look, if you're telling me talent wise, now maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong, right? Maybe I end up looking like a complete jerk, right? But if you just like use your eyes and watch. Herbert in college and watch Daniel Jones in college, you can't tell me that you wouldn't have Herbert rated as a higher prospect. I don't care how many drops Jones had. I don't I don't care. Like you can't tell me that you would watch them and, and walk away from that and try to sell me that Daniel Jones is the quarterback that you would take over Herbert. So nah, I mean, based I'll, off of the yeah, field, I'll say that. right? I mean so I mean so based off of that stuff, like you know, you don't gotta sell me on that. Now but I want to know. Right? I don't want to go into 2020 and having all these quarterbacks sitting there and and not know what I have in my stable. Like I, I got to see the kid. The kid has to play. Let the kid and, you know, play. I want to say right now, I'm I'm not sold at all on the Alabama kid to your Super Bowl or whatever. So I, I, I would, it would be nice to. I mean, they're going to have to play well again this year. I mean, they're these guys are going to have to show that they've progressed. As well, um, you know they're gonna have to stay injury free. Um, things can change in a in a heartbeat. Um, so I don't think anything's a given, and I think that's why the conversation. That's why you can't wait, right? Like you can't say, "All right, well, there's a good quarterback coming out next year. Um, I'll wait to draft the quarterback." Like, no, you can't. Like, if you if you like the kid that's available, you got to take them because you can't tell the future in this shit. Like somebody can get hurt. Yeah. A guy like Herbert can go back to school. Uh, you, so you can't plan for guys like Lawrence and stuff like that. You just have to see where you are at the time. Um, so I don't. If, if you have conviction, you take the kid. They obviously had conviction. Now we're going to see if they were right or wrong. I mean, that's really. There's no other like I, there's no other thing we can do right now besides just sit back and say okay, let's see, yeah. right? I mean, there, there's, there's nothing. Like, that's there's all. No that's point. all it is. Even even with the defense, I, I want to yeah. see. Let, let let's just see because let's they see. got so much youth, so much. Just I'm excited about all the players on there. Do I know they're going to take some risks? I think they actually will get more turnovers this coming year, but I also think we're going to give up more big plays as well. It's just, it's just well I, I think in the beginning of the season, yeah, I think in the beginning of the season you're going to give up. We're going to give up a, a bunch of big plays because I just think that it's it's difficult, man. It's difficult coming from college to the pros, and then 
being on that stage and then being able to cover those guys. And that's, you know, I mean, that's, that's not easy to do. And I, I think that you'll see flashes. I think you'll see plays where you're like, oh, shit, man, Baker, nice play. Oh, love, great breakup, good anticipation. And then I think you're going to see plays where they get beat. And I yeah. think that's completely normal. And, and that's the one nice thing about having Bethea back there. Bethea actually well, taught yeah. him where to go. But you hope you hope um, you hope during the course of a 16 game se- season, the good flashes outweigh the bad flashes, and you're like, okay, I got a player going into 2020. Like I know exactly how to use this kid. This kid thrives like this. He, he, he th- this is where I need to use Baker. Baker is man to man. He's a press guy. Get him up there. I need I need him on the receiver, talking to the guy, being physical with him. You know, love. Yeah. I, I can't. I can't. I, I saw him enough this year to know that I can't play him in the slot. Okay, but I got an open at free safety. Maybe I need to slide him over. You know, maybe yeah. Ballantyne, who you think thinking may project in as a as a fucking safety, may end up coming in and and becoming a cornerback. I mean, you just oh, you don't they're, know they're how these kids are going to develop right at all. I thought they were projecting him in, in the slot. Ballantyne? Yeah. I, I I wouldn't be surprised. I I think the one thing that's attractive about Ballantyne is the fact that you can. I think that you can probably use him in both spots. I don't think that you have to call him a safety or a cornerback. I think that he just becomes a secondary guy, and you can use him in matchups or, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, formations that best suit his needs. Or, 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 you know, there may be one game where you don't see him on the fucking field, and then the other is another game, another week where you're playing a, a, a beast tight end that you need help in the slot against, then Valentine ends up, you know, playing a huge role in that week on the game plan. So um, it's going to be interesting to see how they use the pieces, how the pieces progress, and then how Betsy uses them on that defense. There's talent there. Uh, just got to get the most out of it. Oh, yeah. All right. I'm, I'm right Let's right. go to sleep. Let's go oh, to yeah. sleep. I, well, Marco's <laughs> going to let this thing run all night. I don't even know where he is. So, yeah, he just uh, – Marco just puts his eye and leaves. That's the way he yeah, just. That's it. We're just gonna hang up. up and leave it. We're just gonna hang up and leave it running. And I'll text him and let him know that we hung up. So, uh, right, big, big blue giant fans. Always, always.